Okay, guys. Um, <clears throat> first of all, congratulations for finding this video. This video um, will save you so much aggro and frustration in music. I'm going to focus mainly on finding success in music, but in, in doing that, I will I'll be showing you guys how, just how, like, the right attitudes to have with music as well. Because I think that's kind of part of the problem with, um, with what we're talking about. I think the two things go hand in hand, having the right attitude and being successful. Um, so, this is going to be really good. You're going to learn a lot. You probably might have seen my older video. This is a slightly more updated version. Um... So, I am, I'm kind of adding to it as we go, so, uh, it's going to be really good. Um, I'm going to start, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, my first bit of advice, this is advice number one, is find out what it is you want in music. So, this is something you've got to be very clear on. Do you want just success? You know, you want people to know who you are, um, you know, you're playing big gigs, lots of people come to your shows, you're making lots of money on streaming platforms from your releases. Is that what you want? I think most people, that's what they want. I, I'd imagine a lot of the, the people watching these kind of videos, that's probably their kind of aim. I've talked to a lot of musicians who are, who are sort of... Um, Early on in their careers, like semi-professional, they're not really doing it. They still got to support themselves through other means, and they'll often say things like, "Well, I, you know, it'd be nice to be big, but you know, as long as I can live comfortably, that's the thing that people always say: live comfortably, and um, and you know, still do a few shows here and there. That's all that matters to me, and <sighs> that's never really been." A good strategy, I think, because I just don't think it's true. Like, who gets into music? You know, music is rough. It's a really rough industry. You know, it's a lot of work, and just to go into it so that you can just live, you know, be comfortable. I think it's a nice thing to say, and I'm sure there are some people out there who that is just their priority. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who say that who think that's their priority, but really, when you get down to it. Just really scrutinise if you're one of the people who's saying this. You know, what does that mean? Um, I think it's better to have some kind of aim. And that doesn't have to be, being, like I said, being successful. Um, but you want to have something more concrete than just, you know, ah, oh, you know, just, you, you want, want it to be more than just fun, right? Don't you, with music, you want to be, it's something to be more than just fun. Um, so... So yeah, I would say, figure out what that is. Now that could be, you could decide to go in a very uh, gig-centred -centr direction. Uh, maybe there's certain venues you want to play at. Um, now don't, uh, we'll think big scale and then I'll show you how to sort of draw this in. So, you know, let's say you want to play at um, Reading Festival, right? Um, okay, all right. Or maybe you want to get, um, you want to get plays on some kind of radio station. Uh, you know, that, that is kind of good aims. Something like that. So it doesn't have to be you're the biggest act of, um, you know, the, the 2020s. But it has to be something, something tangible, something you can work towards. Um, because that's kind of where, where half the excitement comes in with music. So, um, okay, so, well, write that down if, you've, if, you've, if you're watching this. Um, have, have, pause this video maybe and just think about what that is and write it down. What, what's, what's one aim that you can work towards? And, um, okay, well, if you've done that, then what you want to do is you want to sort of work backwards from that. So, 
if your aim is to play at Reading Festival, it's like, okay, oh, how do I do that? Well, I know different festivals do it differently, like some you can sort of apply to. I think for Reading, because I've, I've looked into this myself, I think with Reading you have to, um, you have to sort of be chosen to play. So it's a lot about um, who you who you know, right? You got to be in the right um, sort of circles. So I don't, you know, I, some of this might be wrong, but but just go with me here. I'm kind of thinking on the spot. So then you got to work backwards. You think, okay, well, what's the next stage? Are there some smaller events we can play at to get ourselves on there? Maybe we can, you know, like applies for BBC introducing stuff like that. Um, and so just scale it back and back to stuff that's quite small. So, you know, playing at a local venue, playing at a bit bigger venue, doing a set out show, you know, like a headline show, playing at BBC Introducing, playing at Reading, you know. That's, that's, I mean, I'm just thinking of this on the spot. That, that's probably not gonna be the way to do it, but just for a rough idea, that's kind of how you want to achieve your goals. And then when you when you get to play at Reading, um, then then you can like think about where, where you want your music to go next. Okay. Number two, don't get too attached to what you create. Your old music will sound shit compared to what you could make in the future. So what I'm saying by this is here's the timeline of a band that does it wrong, in my opinion. So Band's playing, playing, um, writing music. Maybe it's one guy who's writing music. Maybe it's um, maybe it's a couple guys. Whatever it is, all girls, um, and they're doing it for you know a bit, and then they suddenly write a good you know they're they're writing you know, a few songs, but um, but none of them are that great yet. They want to write some more songs, get something that's really good, and then they write their great song. Their first, one good one good song. And they're like, great, we'll release this as a single. They get really excited about it. Um, put lots of money into a recording studio, get a really good sound, um, and then um, put all their time and effort into recording that song, release that, and then um, they, get a, they get a sort of lukewarm reception from it. You might have had this experience yourself if you're a musician. Um, you know, you've released your first single, but it's it's good. It's a good start, but it's it's not it's not blown off the charts. You know what I mean? Here's what I would do instead. I think instead, like there's that Homer Simpson um, sort of meme, isn't it? Where it's like, ah, uh, it's this. It's like Bart Simpson says. Um, oh, this is the worst day of my life. And then Homer says, uh, it's the worst day of your life so far. Um, I think um, it's the reverse in this scenario where um, it's like um, a band will write one really good song for the first time, but it's actually not that great compared to what they'll write maybe three months down the line. So I would say, instead of putting all your creative energy into releasing your first song, which, and I, I'm allowed to say this because I've done this myself, um, in the grand scheme of things, it's probably a bit mediocre. Um, it's better to put all that creative energy into writing more songs so that in six months' time you write a song that is sat, that makes all the, makes that, previous songs sound as bad as the songs you were writing before that song. Um, and then maybe, you know, feel the time's right, maybe wait longer, um, maybe, maybe release that there and then. Uh, I don't know what point you stop, but I think you want to really get your writing under your belt and write really good material before you even think about releasing it. I think we're at an age now where we can release anything we want. Um, we can record and release anything we, we like. Um, sorry, I'm going to be doing that a lot. Um, we, get, we can release anything we like as quickly as possible, right? Because of, um, because of technology. 
but I really recommend to invest in the process of writing music rather than in releasing to begin with. Um, number two, don't rely on friends to supply access to plus supply success for you. So what I mean by this is don't think don't like you'll get you you'll you'll ask friends to like pre-save stuff on, on Spotify or or um or uh come to your gigs and stuff. And I'm not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is don't rely on it. I think a lot of bands rely on pre-saves and, um, and you know, friends coming to their gigs. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really do a lot. So obviously, if you pre-save something, then, then if, if all your friends pre-save it, then does it bump up the algorithm a bit? Yeah, sure. If you get all your friends to come to a gig, then... Is the, is the venue likely to put you again? Sure. The problem I have with is it's not really, it's not really supplying you with very much success anyway. So maybe the the song on the, on the algorithm gets bumped up a, a tiny bit more, but even if all your friends pre-save it, let, let's, let's face it, it's not a huge amount that, that's gonna, it's gonna go up by. And, um, And similarly, um, you know, yes, if you if you fill out a, a pub with all your friends on a, on a Friday night, that's that's great, and the the um, the venue will book you again, I'm sure. But in reality, it's it's not actually like you. So what, really? Um, in the grand, what I'm saying is, in the grand scheme of things, what your friends can help you with. Is actually quite small, uh, so by all means make your friends a part of the music scene, but but don't don't rely on it too much. And also, like you don't want to get to the point where you, you, your friends feel like you they have to come to your stuff because it is it, it, it. Yeah, I don't know. I think it it can get a bit annoying. I mean, I I was always very careful when I was in music not to to do that. Um, but you do naturally at some point. It's it's difficult balance because um, your friends want you to succeed, but they do have lives of their own at the same time. <clears throat> and in any case, I think it's a bit of a cope anyway, because you don't really want your song to be famous because all your friends pre-saved it, or or your gig to be a success because your friends turned up. You want it to be a, you want you want it to be a success because you're of your own. Talents, don't you? Because of your own, um, you know, because you're actually good at the instruments you're playing, you know. If you if you're just relying on your friends to those things, then I think it's like it cheapens the success that you you want anyway. Fucking hell! Police cars just pulled up outside our house. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know what that's about. Um, Okay, um, so uh, number three, realise that it takes time to develop and to fully realise your artistic ability. So that, this is going back to what I was saying in number two. Um, but I want to sort of extend this to like your whole career, right? Uh, not just like when you release your first single. So... Um, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people kind of get depressed when they see childhood stars becoming, or like younger acts getting onto the scene, um, like early on in their career. But I actually think, obviously it's easier the younger you are to get into music. But I actually think some of the best acts and some of the most real, well realized acts and the acts that can evolve, you know, sort of are most well remembered are actually people who are developed and come into it later. So uh, people like Kanye West, uh, Giggs, um, I can't remember how old Jay Z was, but I think he was 
quite a bit older when he made his foot when he released his first album. Um, you know, uh, there are, I mean there are loads of examples. Um, those are the first that come to mind. But you see what I mean? Like they're quite big names. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions. Um, you know, I guess Arctic Monkeys were very fresh faced, and they're still quite a big thing. Um, and oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying there aren't exceptions to this rule. Like the you know Arctic Monkeys, um, were very young when they were successful. Um, and I'm not I'm not saying either that. Um, these people weren't working hard at music before they became successful. But I just think if you're 18 or, 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 or you know, you're 20, you're 21, and you're kind of thinking, oh, there are all these people who are already successful. I think you've got to think about it in the long game more. Um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these people have been um, I've been successful in a lot, a lot of these people who are older, who are more successful, tend to fare better, like being famous and as well. So, so yeah. Um, okay, number four, uh, don't be insincere. Authenticity is all you've got. So I follow a lot of bands on Instagram and stuff, and a lot of them will say stuff like, I'm so honoured to be for you guys to be on this journey with me, and obviously that's a very sweet thing to say. My problem with that is, I actually think it's a bit. It doesn't come across to me as particularly sincere. Um. So I think. I think that annoys people, because it's one thing if it's coming from a big artist. who, um, a big artist who, like, you know, everyone knows and, and stuff, you know, you can't expect that, but, you know, it's like, when you're sort of starting off, it's not really what people want to hear, um, because you're not honoured to be playing at the Bell Inn on a Friday night, um, and so, uh, you know, it's, some sh it's like, that's not really where... Just don't don't fake it. Is what is what I'm getting at. Because, like I said, authenticity is all you got. I think it's much better to to just be yeah. I mean, to be authentic in your gratitude and and what what you say on your socials. And now, like I can't really tell you what to do for this because I I guess that's kind of the point. Is it's like it's your own thing, right? You know, I can't just tell you to be, um, you know, you know, like, you have to be authentic in your own way, right? Um, I'm not saying just be like, oh, I hate this stupid gig. Um, it wasn't very exciting, actually. But, in a sense, like, at least, at least you're being honest, you know, like, I just think, focus on authenticity, because people like that. People like that. Um, okay, so here's another one. Um, always be striving for the next big thing. Don't get stuck in a rut releasing singles. So I've, I've seen a lot of bands who, who just get stuck in a rut of releasing singles. Uh, but it can be other things. Uh, like for me, it was, um, it was um, open mics. I just got stuck in a rut of playing open mics, not really actually doing anything with my music. And this is a problem because you need, going back to what we were saying earlier, like, you need something to strive for in music. So uh, you need to be always thinking about the next thing you're going to do. So if you release three singles, instead of releasing three more, record, record five more and release an album. Um, if you're stuck in doing open mics, I would say... Think, you know, really, well, I don't know, record a single or, or something like that, you know. I think it's very depressing for you to just to be doing the same thing over, over and over again. 
Um, and it doesn't scream that you're someone very exciting if that's what you're doing. So that's number six. Uh, number seven, and this is the last one um, for today. Uh, don't get, this is probably my biggest one, I think. So, um, I know I said this for the first one, but um, if there's one rule that I'll take away, it is, it is this one. Cause, just because it's so, it's so silly if you get caught down this road. And you just make yourself look like such a mug. And I, I've done it as well. I've done it, this shit to death. And um, there are videos of me all over the in internet just being a muck doing this kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I'm allowed to say this, but don't get distracted on promo. It just looks so silly if you're a small act. You know, you're still making a name in the game. You should be focusing on writing music, on recording, you know, or, or depending on what stage you're at, writing music either playing live um, or, you know, practicing in a band. Those, kind of, those are kind of the only things you really need to be doing. If you're spending time, like, on TikTok saying, like, what meal deal does each member of the band get? Um, or just, just like, stupid, dumb videos of you fucking about in rehearsals. Like, um, and obviously, like, you know, maybe if, you, if it happens... Or, you know, um, organically, and you know, you have little funny videos put on your socials, sure. Um, but I think people just a lot of people just end up running their own like fan account for for their bands, and rather than doing the work that they're meant to be there to do, which is writing and releasing music, um, and yeah, I don't know, I just think it looks, makes it look really silly. And like I say, I've done this as well, just, just, because, because you'll just get in a rut of, of, um, of just spending days just thinking like, oh, what's a, like a funny TikTok I can release today? Or oh, we need to release every day. It's like, you're not a YouTuber. You're not a, you're not a TikToker. You're a musician. The only releasing you should really be worrying about is the music. Now I'm not saying don't have a socials account. Sure. You need somewhere to at announce when you're playing and when you're releasing. Um, but I just think this whole thing, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cope because it's actually quite a fun thing to do just to post on TikTok all day long instead of actually like doing something difficult and playing the instruments. Um, and you're, you know, you, you're just wasting your time. So those are my seven tips. I'll sure do more again in the future, but I just think this is so, it's a good philosophy for life in general as well, if not music.